Right, so this is how I set up my Mac so it doesn't ruin my life. I've been using this MacBook for about 8 to 10 hours every single day for the last year now. So I've got a few ideas on how to make sure it doesn't distract me and I can stay productive and focused. So in this video, I'll take you through those settings and apps I'm using. And we'll start with the like more fundamental, easy to implement tips and go all the way up to the most important pieces of software I use. Oh, and yes, they're all free, like, of course. So the very first thing I do on my Mac is to make sure that my desktop is clean. The more items my brain has to process whenever like I boot up my MacBook, the more distracted and chaotic my head is gonna be. I think about it like this, your brain kind of has RAM, so random access memory, the same way your computer does. So the thing I really try to do is to make sure I allocate clearly what things can go in that RAM and which things I can just offload onto something else. So I go into settings and under desktop and dock, I deactivate show items on desktop. If you do ever need them, which I found is quite rare, you can simply click on your desktop and they will show up. The menu bar is incredibly slow to pop up once you slid your mouse onto it. I found this simple piece of code to add to your terminal, which cuts the animation time in half and allows you to have this super fast animation. All of a sudden the dock becomes actually enjoyable and usable. Now, as I just mentioned, this whole setup is all about freeing up your brain's RAM so you can focus on what you actually want to focus on. So to do that, I hide some more icons by using the hidden bar app. This is great for some small functional apps you'll set up once but never want to look at again. I can simply drag them to the left of this vertical bar and then press the arrow to hide them. And there you go, even more brain space freed up. Now, this one is unique to me, but I keep three clocks with time zones in my sidebar since I'm frequently going back and forth between the US and Germany. On top of that, I have quite a few friends in India because I studied there for two years, so I keep a Mumbai time zone as well. Above that, I keep my weather, quite basic, but always important, and a battery widget to know when to charge my AirPods. And to make sure that I don't ruin my sleep through my MacBook, I use this software called F-Lux. It basically allows you to automatically change the color temperature of your screen as it gets dark outside. This is important because the blue light emitted from your display can disrupt your so-called circadian rhythm, so your sleep cycle. As it gets late and dark outside, you want your screen to have less and less blue light and use warmer orange to yellow tones instead. After setting this up, I use the hidden bar I mentioned before to hide it. Now, literally just like a couple of days ago, I discovered a new way to keep myself focused and locked in while I'm trying to work. And that's a way I kind of haven't mentioned on the channel yet. And that is to use the power of the clock. This might sound silly to you, but it changed the way I work. So I started setting two hour timers. But you need to understand that this only works if you make a contract with yourself to do nothing else as long as the timer is running. Like you can't just set the timer and then do fuck all. So the way I do it is that if I need to do something else, I can just pause the timer, interrupt my task and then go back later and start the timer again. But the important thing is that while the timer is on, you actually just work. Now, there is one software which is probably the most foundational for this entire setup. You see, as much willpower as I think I've trained myself to have, everyone has weak moments sometimes. So my strategy is to make sure that I simply have a safety net that makes sure that I don't just waste hours of my life on degenerate things. And the number one software that helps me to do that is Opal. It stops you from entering certain apps and websites while it's on. So, for example, if I try to check my email while I'm supposed to be in deep work, writing or researching, then a window pops up telling me I can't open Gmail. If you really need to check your mail, you can just snooze Opal for 5 to 15 minutes and it will go back to blocking after again. This goes for every app or site you want. You can fully customize which apps and sites are blocked and which ones are not. I simply have an automatic session set up which goes from 6 a.m., which is roughly when I wake up, to 7 p.m., which is around the time where I should be making sure to just stop working because it's getting too late anyways. I just throw all my potential vices in there. For example, now this is quite funny, but I used to procrastinate by getting really good at slope. 
so I put that on my blocked list too. Now, having a well thought through calendar is really, really essential for me. I use my calendar, especially during the college term when I need to make sure that my time management is on point. This is what it looks like during more academically busy times. Just shift it all up by seven hours to get it to like actual time. But I'm on break right now, so it's a bit less stringent. Still, almost every day before going to bed, I use Notion Calendar to schedule my deep work sessions for the next day. Now, probably the next most important part of my setup is the way I use my browser. To start, I use Brave. I'm not some kind of nerd that knows all the differences between browsers, but this one is great for me because it blocks all ads. And ads by design are meant to distract you, so I love that I can get rid of those. So as far as I can remember, I simply just haven't seen an ad anywhere on my tech, so on my MacBook or my phone for the past year, which is something I very specifically designed for. So I'm very happy that that's the case. Now, I probably shouldn't tell you about this because it might stop you from watching these videos too but I have a very specific way I set up my YouTube so it doesn't ruin my ability to think. I use a browser extension called Unhook. This allows you to hide every single attention grabber on YouTube and make it the most powerful site for knowledge acquisition, like ever. My settings are very simple. I basically hide everything except for my subscriptions, the top header and video info. So I only see the long form videos of people I genuinely want to hear from and I can just hide everyone else's content. Now, this one is for all of you who ever have to submit a document for someone else to read. And even if you're not in college or school or something, this can still be incredibly valuable. But I have one warning, which is if you use this, then people are going to compliment how absolutely beautiful your documents look. At least I think so. At least that's what has happened to me. For all my academic writings, I use Overleaf, which is like an online platform that allows you to create PDFs using LaTeX. Now, this seems a bit scary at first, but through like 10 minutes of YouTube tutorials, I was able to learn how to use this. I'll definitely link one in the description. If this looks familiar to you, then it's probably because many research papers use this exact language, so LaTeX. And this gives your work this more professional feel you want when you submit something. So in my opinion, this is a great way to make any files like PDFs you have to submit stand out. After my browser, this is probably the app I rely on most. I used to keep my entire life in Notion, but there was a massive problem with that. Notion doesn't allow you to connect ideas to each other. This is when I came across Obsidian, a software that allows you to create this, a true second brain. Seeing as my work and studies rely highly on me writing, like I'm just writing all the time, this is perfect for me. As a super simple example, let's say I learn something about nutrition and I learn something about powerlifting. If I wrote these notes down in Notion, I would never truly understand their relation. But in Obsidian, I can create a tag for physical health and simply add both of them to it. With time, you grow this brain-like neural network of ideas and wisdom. So whenever I'm stuck on something or lack a new creative approach to a problem I'm facing, I can just check my second brain for anything this problem could relate to. And as always, I'm just getting started with these videos, so please roast the hell out of them so I can make them better for you. This was Jonah. Um, much love. Uh, bye.